Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Jessica Abernathy, and with me today is Trisha Montgomery, and you are listening to Pets Our Family. Hi, Trisha. Hello, love. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Jessica Abernathy, and with me today is Trisha Montgomery, and you are listening to Pets Our Family. Hi, Trisha. Hello, love. How you doing? Can't complain. I'm getting rid of that. The printer in your background? Yeah, drives me crazy. <laughs> I, you know uh-huh. what? Can I just tell you that I never notice the printer in the background. It's like whenever you have like a zit on your face and you're the only one who notices it and you point it out and you're like, oh my God, do you see this on my face? <laughs> and no one noticed it until you pointed it out and go like a post-it note, like a big arrow. <laughs> that printer does. It's all I see when I'm talking with you guys. I see sunflowers right here. I see there's something right here, which is, oh, my other flower basket up here. I can see flowers over here. And then I see printer. You need to do something about that. If that is making you crazy again, I don't think I nor anybody who has watched this podcast has ever noticed your printer. But now I'm not even going to look at you. My eyes are going to be like transfixed printer. on that great, great printer back there that looks a little bit antiquated. So <laughs> printer, printer, printer. I could just see Justin's going to have a field day with that one. But yeah, that's all. I trust you. That's, yep. Just because so we are, we are like rolling into 2024, like no tomorrow. And man, it has been, yeah. I feel like it is just kicking things off and um, a lot going on already. And I don't understand why, if it is like the new year, starting the new year, why is it so busy? <laughs> well, it's, it's been busy. I mean, we, you know, we talked last week about all the fun things that we've got coming up, we're going to be doing and stuff like that. You know, and we, we're talking about a pressing subject in January. And then after that, we're going to be talking about fun, fun, fun and moving forward. You know what I mean? We got to talk about the not fun stuff and then we got to move on. But, you know, we got to talk about the real stuff. We do, but also one thing that you've taught me and that and that we're talking about grief, guys. We're talking about yeah. grief and yeah. sadness and, and what happens during the holidays and the we, you know, our, our sadness kind of compounds, not kind of, it does compound because, you know, we'll talk more about that, but the holidays and everything else, but it doesn't have to be so sad and just like the person that we are going to be bringing on. Um, your friend Lisa McGrath from Thorns Promise um, that there is goodness and greatness that comes out of it, just like Moose's March for me, and out of that grief yep. and sadness, something even beautiful and greater. So I'm looking forward to talking to her. Yeah, Lisa's a Lisa's a great person. I I um, a lot of you guys know I do a lot. I do coaching. And she was one of my students for two years. And so Thorn passed away while I was coaching her. And so I went through the whole thing with her. And so when we were talking about the grief, she was like the first person that popped in my head because I want, you know, we always want to talk about pet parents. And when we were talking about this, and I was like, she is one of the perfect pet parents I wanted to talk to just for the one fact that it hit her so hard. Mm-hmm. Not that it doesn't hit any of us other, but if she, it hit her hard and she doesn't get the gab anyway, but you know what I mean? And she's, you know, willing to come talk to us. And she's, you know, she turned around a, a hard situation like you and she's, you know, she's making, she honors him on a daily basis is what she does. I love that. I love that. I cannot wait to meet her. Well, let me go, go, go get her then. So here we go. Hi, Lisa. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. How about you? How are you? I'm, I'm fantastic. So I haven't talked to you in forever, but you know what I mean? It's a good thing. Always a good thing. We brought you on because we wanted to talk to you a little bit about being a pet parent. And um, in January, we're talking about pet loss and the holidays and how the holidays as it is in January, it's always depressing. January is like the most depressing month. For most of us in the northern part of the world, it is bloody cold, right? So it's cold already here. It's actually today, I'm going to be honest with you, it's 
freezing. We're getting a major snowstorm. It's cold here in Chicago. It's like freezing. And Trish is down there in Florida and it's nice and warm. So, but she's getting a storm. I get that, but it's still, it's warmer than it is here. Um, but, you know, January is always that after effect of the holidays. We're always depressed because we all overspent for the holidays. You know, all our family's gone. You know what I mean? We're all alone again. We might be stuck with our spouses that we don't really, really like. You know what I mean? We know you like Mike, but you know, we we might be stuck with our spouses that we don't like or family that we don't really care for. But it also brings up the fact that, you know what I mean? Um, If we have lost our pets, you know what I mean? And we, it, it brings up the quietness because there's, they're not around anymore. You know what I mean? And that it's, it hurts, you know what I mean? And some people it hurts more than others. And it hurts more for those that are alone or are struggling to deal with things that they don't know how to deal with it and stuff like that. But you as a pet parent, I know because I was around when it all happened and I know a lot about what, you know, about it. So I brought you on as a pet parent that has lost, um, for a best way to put it, is your heart dog. So um, I want, yeah, he was your heart dog. And I might actually cry, which that'll blow Trisha's brain. Because, you know what I mean? Because I am the non-crier of the group. So it will blow Trisha's brain. It's the wonder of the world. Yeah, it would be the eighth wonder. But so we want, I want to hear a little bit about how you, um, how you guys met. So tell us a little bit about your heart dog. I'm not, I'm not told anybody's name yet. So I want to hear how you met your heart dog. So let's hear the story of how you guys first met. So I was completing a walk at one of my client's homes. And after mm-hmm. a walk, we send updates via an app. And I was sitting in my car and I was sending an update. And this dog comes walking onto my client's yard. And I look, and I'm like looking around. You know, seeing if anybody was with it, it was off leash and stuff like that. So nobody was around. I get out and he's super skinny, like super skinny. He was, you know, his back end wasn't working well. Um, Super friendly, though. He came right up to me. And again, I'm still looking around to see if anybody's with him. And nobody was there. Um, And it was cold. It was November 27th. And it was it was cold. and It was going to be below freezing that night. And I'm like. I can't leave this dog out here, you know, and I got him, like he came over and he, I gave him a treat and I, I opened my door. I'm like, you're going to come in. And he like had trouble getting up even onto the back, like the floor of my car. So I was like, all right. And I, I helped him up and I'm like, please don't bite me. Please don't bite me. You know, cause I didn't know the dog, you know, he's a right. baby. I didn't know him. And um, I got him up into the, the car. And by the time I got into the front seat, he had climbed into the front seat and curled up. Like, oh. he belonged. So I was like, oh, all right. And I still had another walk to do. So I went and I did my other walk. And he stayed curled up in the nice warm car. And then I took him to a vet. Not chipped. He wasn't fixed. He, he had, did have a collar on, which, you know, I'm like, right, somebody had him at some point. But nobody ever claimed him. We posted it on the business page posted it. And, and I mean, if you know anybody that's ever found a pet within 24 hours, somebody knows somebody that knows the dog, right? right. Nobody, nobody knew this dog. So that's, that's how we met. Like it was just by chance. It was on the street right off 495 in Wilmington and the rest is history. <laughs> How'd you name him? I mean, how did you come across his I mean, so the first name we thought of, it was right after the flyers announced their new mascot gritty and it was like oh, it was a big deal because mike's a flyers fan and it just didn't sit well and then our my other dog is named for game of thrones so i was like let's do something like just like because he was like big barrel chest even though he's skinny he was you know he, he had a big chest so i'm like i need a like a yeah. strong name and i just always like thor and oakenshield from the hobbit <laughs> And I'm not even like a big Hobbit fan, but as soon as I said it, Mike's eyes lit up, my eyes lit up, I'm like, it's Lauren. So and then Marcus, his middle name is Marcus. I, <laughs> I, grew up, I grew up in Marcus Hook and it was Thorin Marcus. Aw, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yep. So Thor and Marcus McGrath. So out of curiosity, so he became family, obviously, right away. So what part of this? I mean, like, how did he make himself part of your family? Because he obviously just like, hi, Lisa. Yep, and I'm yours. Way, yeah, I'm it yours. Was- so he he made himself family. But how did he make himself family? So he came in the night I brought him in. I told my family, I'm like, I found this abandoned dog. I'll be bringing him home. And we had dogs here that were staying. So I was like, you know separate everybody for us. And he came in and he peed all over my house. And I'm like, well, this is not, cause he wasn't, you know, wasn't neutered. he was scared. Right. I'm like, all right, this isn't going well. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we went and I got him the belly bands and a bit like, you know, I went and then I got him the cap star. I got him the belly bands, like within hours of meeting him, like, and then about two days later, I'm like, I really hope his owner doesn't come forward. Like, I really hope. And I gave it a week and then officially announced that he was a family member. But he got along with all the dogs that were here. You know, he did not like my cat, um, but he just, he was just part of us. Like, he just, you know, he ate when he, he ate well. He went outside. Once he calmed down, you know, from being nervous and, all that, you know, and figured out the doggy door. Like he was, he just, Mike always said he had an unhealthy obsession with me. He's like, the way that dog looks at you is unhealthy. <laughs> and that was literally yeah, day he, one. He knew you were his. Yep. He, you were his heart person almost. Absolutely. Like, absolutely. It was, it was the, I don't want to say the strangest thing. It was absolutely the coolest thing, but it was instantaneous. It was crazy. Like it's this dog. I just picked up off the street. Like, I don't know what I would have done if somebody's like, Hey, that's my dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know, and you know, innately. Right. Yeah. And yeah, 48 hours. I mean, it's, it's rare that, I mean, and it's rare, it's rare because people talk about their heart animal or their, the one that they bond with. And until you have that bond with the animal or your heart animal is what, that's what we call it is your heart animal. Mm-hmm. You don't understand that connection, you know, until you have I that. And yeah. I didn't and when you, right. You've had right. animals. Yep. You've Multiple had dogs. You've had, life. yeah. And I've loved every one of them and they've all been family. But there was just something about him. You know, it, it was crazy. I would go leave and go to do walks and he would just walk up the steps, come up on my bed and wait till I got home. And he would wait for hours and Mike would call him down. He wouldn't come down. My mom would come over. Soon as I got home, he was down off the bed and um, down the steps. Hi, mom. Hi. Yeah, I'm here. I waited yeah, for I'm you. here. <laughs> Let's go. What are we doing cool. today? Yep. And he had medical issues. He, he went paralyzed three months after we met. Um, so oh, we, wow. we did three days of acupuncture for, he started walking again in three months, but like we had the sling. I mean, it was, we had a wheelchair, like it was the whole deal. He knew, he knew, he knew he had to find the right person to deal with the, with him. He knew he was sick and he needed to find his human because he knew he needed somebody to take care of him. And he picked you to be that person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's special because not every animal will pick you. You know what I mean? You know, and that's, but not every person would have dealt with that. Like, no, you know, anybody (laughs) else could have, and that may have been like, maybe that's why he was dumped. Like we, we think he was dumped where he was. It's a a well-known dumping ground um, Mm -hmm. for dogs. You know, and the fact that nobody knew him, um, it was right off of a major highway, on and off, real fast. Like, so and we're just assuming he was, um, but maybe that's why, because his back was bad. He was older. We had no idea how old he was. So the vet said between six and eight, based off of his teeth and everything. So I had him two, close to three years. So he was anywhere okay. between nine and you know th- twelve, thirteen. Yeah, like, we have no idea. He did start to get a lot grayer though. But on his good days, I always like, oh, he's closer to the six, you're, you know, the younger side. And then when he was having his bad days with his back and all, I'm like, yeah, maybe he is closer to the, the older side. But we had no idea. No. I don't think it really matters 
amount, the number, the amount of time that you've got, I, it really doesn't. I think it's that quality. And then when you know, you know. Yep. Yep. And yeah. I, I'm like, I mean, we kind of joked around that I was going to be a nutcase when, you know, he did pass and I warned the family multiple times. I'm like, guys, this is not going to be well. And then, like I said, I was joking because he was healthy and he was right next to me. Well, it didn't go well. <laughs> Who do you, you know, I mean, and this is something we're talking about is the the loss, you know what I mean? But who do you think took it the worst out of all of you? Which I kind of know who did, but you know what I mean? Because I was around when, you know, he passed yeah. away, but yeah. He was my you know. thought. Like he, I mean, Mike loved him. My kids liked him. You know, it was, everybody liked him, but no, it was no competition there. <laughs> yeah. It he was, was definitely me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, how, what did you do? I mean, share, cause this is something that people don't understand and it's, you know what I mean? And we've talked about, Trisha and I've talked about it with other people. You know what I mean? When I was younger, people would, I remember I told this before. I remember when I was, I told Trisha this, I worked for the airlines and I had a guy call in and say that, you know, his cat was sick and he couldn't come to work. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's an incident. Yeah, I'm like, now. yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, your cat's what? I'm like, is your cat named Bin Laden? I'm like, what do you mean your cat's sick? You know what I mean? I don't get it. You know what I mean? But bye, now, bye. Like, How we yeah, I'm like, I get it now. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? But you know, I didn't understand it. And I grew up with animals. You know what I mean? I've right. always had two dogs, two cats, multiple guinea pigs. You know, I. We had a flock of turkeys, a flock of chickens, geese. I mean, I've had them all, you know, but I was like calling in sick for a cat. I I just didn't understand that one. But anyway, you know what I mean? And I love cats. Don't get me wrong. I do get cats, you know. Um, but you know what I mean? What were some of the things that you did to help cope with the loss? You know what I mean? Because he was your heart dog. Yeah. And it was, it wasn't, he wasn't sick, right? So it was, he was. He had an obstruction. It ended up being some kind of obstruction. And he wasn't a dog that ate things he wasn't supposed to, except dog poop out back. Like I would follow him around and he would show me every pile. And I, he was slow, so I was able to get to him most times. <laughs> but there was a monkey ball. Must have been underneath one of the piles. And he he swallowed it. So, you know, the monkey balls, the prickly balls that come off the uh, gum trees, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, he started not feeling well on a Saturday by Monday. Like I, it, I took him in and had, you know, hindsight's 2020. I probably should have taken him in Sunday. Um, but so he had the surgery on Monday, made it through the surgery and then ended up with pneumo uh, aspiration pneumonia two days later. So that's what ultimately, you know, took him. So it wasn't expected, but I had a couple of days there, you know, that, the hopes was here. And then, you know, I kind of knew. So, um, coping with it. I mean, you know, initially when I'm sitting there, it was the, um, when he was still alive and there was still hope. I was like, God, how do people pay for this? Right? Like how do people yeah. pay for this stuff? Luckily we were in a position that I could. And, you know, aside from putting him in a, an oxygen tank, we did everything we possibly could to, to make, you know, to give him the chance, you know, once he got bad. Um, and then like immediately it just went to, how can I help other people with the financial piece of it? So the coping for me was starting the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just, because it kept his face in my brain, like right in front of me every single day, every day. I'm a person that I don't hide from it. Like I have pictures everywhere. I wear him on my chain. I have a tattoo. Like I need to see his face. Some people like you know, lose pets and like, Oh, I can't even talk about him for six months. That's not me. Like, please talk to me about my dog. So, you know, doing the nonprofit work, organizing that, you know, his pictures and everything. And, you know, the story on the, on the website is like, you know, bawling my eyes out, but it was just so healing for me. You know, yeah. So tell us a little, so tell us a little bit about the non for profit that you started for, you know, Thorn. Yep. So it's called Thorne's Promise. Um, and we basically help pet parents um, when they're at an emergency vet and, you know, they need help with the bill. It, you know, they need to, Thorne needed the ultrasound. Well, you know, if I didn't have $800, 
it would have been either wait and see and let him suffer or, you know, put him down. And I don't want people to have to make that life and death decision based on finances for a test or, you know, a surgery that we know is going to fix them, you know, right. Um, you know, obviously for the tens of thousands of dollar surgery, you know, we can't help with all of it, but we, we help as much as we can. We fundraise, you know, so people can put it out to their personal networks instead of a GoFundMe because GoFundMe takes a big percentage of the money. Um, yeah. You know, all everything, everything we, you know, raise or get for a specific pet goes towards that pet, you know, and then, you know, we recoup and, you know, put it back into our, you know, our, our coffer for the next one. How do you qualify? Not, I guess, how do you qualify people when, when they contact you, Linda? How do you, how do you do that? It, say you get t- 10 people that say, I, you, we need your help. Lisa, sorry. Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> how do you, how do you qualify those people? How do you, how do you, how do you manage those? So, I mean, luckily there haven't been th- hundreds of them. Um, mm-hmm. It's. Well, who knows after the podcast? But- What's that? Yeah. yeah. Said, Who knows after this podcast? Yeah. Um, so I do have a questionnaire on our website that tells you what we do and, and won't specifically cover. Like, you know, we're not going to cover a dog's blown out knee. You know, we're not going to cover, we can't cover mm-hmm. cancer treatments, but we can, if there's a mass, we'll cover the diagnostics to get to the point that they know it's cancer. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it, honestly, like we haven't had so many requests that I've really had to turn anybody down right now. Yeah. And they've come in, you know, really good waves, I guess you can say, you know. I love what you're doing. I can, I just, Thank well, you. I love what you're doing. I mean, that's, that's how I got through with Moose and being able to, you know, cope and create something in, in their on in his honor, just like you did in, 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 in Thorne's honor. Yep. You're yep. beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So, all right. That's awesome. So it's been around for a year and a half now, roughly. Has it been over a year and a half? What? Thor's promise? Uh, a little yeah. over two years. Yeah. It was wow. October, okay. 2021. I officially launched it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah he, all right. Well, he passed away September 2nd. And by the end of October, we were, we were, I had got my IR determination and all that. So I didn't awesome. mess around. No. Yeah. I do remember that. Like I said, I was around when you, when he passed away, I do remember that. And I remember how crushing it was. And I do remember you starting to do the process, you know, and I know you were, you were like, just like that, you know, Mm -hmm. well, enough that I had started, you know, the dog walking before that. So I had, Mm -hmm. you know, how to do the whole corporation thing and all like, so I had all that, you know, right. It wasn't that far you know, in the past. So it was easy to get that part together. And then, you know, just everybody, everybody that knew me knew about Thorin, like, and they know about Stark and that, you know, they know, and like, I've had Stark since he was eight weeks old and he's nine now. So it's like, I love him just as much as I've loved Thorin, but you know, there's just that connection with Thorin. It's so hard to explain. It really is. It's it's not hard to explain it because I I understand what you're saying I do there's just a, there's a certain connection and it, it, there's a void I believe within your heart mm-hmm. and you know try as you might to fill that void there's something that sometimes you just can't yeah. <laughs> there's a certain I always say a piece of my heart has been broken and gone from Moose so I would imagine you feel the same way about Th- Thorn. Yep. And I, I still feel him with me too. Like that's, there's no doubt that he's, you know, here <laughs> in, so, in some respects, because, you know, there's still a time I'll glance and, you know, south corner of my eye or, you know, when I walk outside, I'll just, you know, just like in my mind's eye, he's, because we did the same path every day. Like I would walk out with him and, you know, and he peed on the same branch every day. You know what I mean? Like there was such a routine with him. So it's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's still there. What is one of your favorite memories that you can share with us about Thorne? Oh, geez. I think, just, <laughs> I think so when I would come home, you know, just about every day I would be like, Thorne. 
and he would be upstairs and he would just, the noises he would make, like he would just rawr, rawr, like, I can't even describe them. Like, and then like, I would hear just, you know, he, cause he needed steps to come off my bed. So I'd hear him get down the steps and then he would run around the bed and then he'd run down the hallway. Like I, and you know, just that, like every day, every day, it was the same thing. And like, th- I think that's what I missed the most. Like in the beginning was just, you know, there was no, when I'd walk in the door, there was, you know, I'd, every day it was Thorin. Cause I knew he wasn't downstairs with Mike. He was upstairs waiting for me. Right. Isn't that the best? I love it. Yeah. It's like little Teddy. Yeah. I love it when little Teddy comes up to me and he's like, mommy's home. (laughs) You know, he gets all excited and Teddy's gone blind. You know what I mean? So before he'd like race around, now he just like jumps up and down in the one spot because he doesn't know where anything is. So he just jumps up and down, (laughs) you know, he just jumps right there. And I'm just like, I'm right here. kid." You know, he's like, yeah, I love it's that. Me. Yeah, no. like, Mom, I'm right here, Mom. Come get me, Mom. I know you're here. I can't see you, but you can see me. Yeah, oh. I'm jumping right here, Mom. Come here. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And I was the only one he would give kisses to. Mike oh. tried for two and a half years to get a kiss from him, and every once in a while he would bless Mike with a kiss. But I mean, the minute I'm like, Thorne, have a kiss, and like he would just cover oh. my face, like. And it's just like those little things, you know, whenever I was around, he was next to me. He was with me. Like, and if I wasn't here, he wasn't, he was upstairs. If you had to share with a pet parent that just lost their, you know, their heart animal or one of their favorite animals, you know, in the last couple of months, you know, and they're grieving and the holidays are over, you know, and their pocketbooks are broke because they just did the holidays, obviously, what would be something that you would share with them to help them get through the next couple months? Because I mean, we have Valentine's Day. I mean, granted, it's a Hallmark holiday, but I mean, it's, it's that heart holiday, holiday that, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the holiday of love, you know what I mean? And everybody's like, ooh, ooh, you know what I mean? Ooh. Once again, I'm the weirdo. <laughs> Smash me into the wall for 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 Valentine's Day. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, it's for I'm Cupid wearing that. Yeah, I'm the one girl you never have to worry about for Valentine's Day. So, but yeah, <laughs> me too. Me too. Yeah, um, but the, my biggest, I think, piece of advice is just you know look at their pictures, talk about them, like don't don't hide it, don't don't be embarrassed. I mean, because I mean, so my family knew what he meant to me, but like all my friends, like I would just talk about him. Like, not like he was still here, but he was a huge part of my, my, my life for those, you know, thousand and ten days that I had him, you know, it's, it's just like, just, just, oh. just remember them. That, and that, but that's me, you know, some people can't do that, but like, I was, you know, so glad I have thousands of pictures of him in every wow. state of sleep and, you know, videos. Cause he, they would sing to me. Stark and Thorne would sing. You know, they would howl, but it wasn't a howl with oh. Thorne. <laughs> and like every year, so I, I have one on my birthday, and I'm like, the boys are singing birthday, my happy birthday to me. So every year now it comes up because I posted it on Facebook, and it's just like I love it. Like I don't want to forget that. Yeah, I find it interesting, Lisa, that I've had people say to me just because of Moose wasn't I adopted him during the pandemic whenever I was with Paws and. It was March of 2020, and he was gone by May of 2022. And people said, well, you didn't have him that long. I'm like, yeah, (laughs) you know, yeah. So you didn't have Thorn. I mean, you had Thorn for what, two two years, two and a half years? Yeah, it was 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 like 1,010 days. No, just kidding. It was, so I got him, it was like November 20th, November 7th. Um, that I got him of 2018 and then September 2nd of 2021. So a little less than three years. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What do you, has anybody ever said that to you, Lisa, that, you know, okay. No, not to me personally. Okay. You know, I think they know better. They're not hard. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say they're not heartless like me. You know what I mean? And they know better. (laughs) Lisa's a lot like me. You know what I mean? No offense. Lisa's also from the East coast. She'll cut you. <laughs> you know, well, we're going there again. 
<laughs> yeah, she'll cut, she'll cut you for because of her dog. Trust me, she's one of those people that you just, you know, yeah, let her be. <laughs> not a violent podcast, I promise. This is not violent. <laughs> it's not a violent, it's a family podcast. We all protect our animals very well here. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, our animals are part of our family. Animals. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. all our children. They're just <laughs> four like a children, you know? Yeah. I say between the terrorism of bin Laden and the terrorist threats of bin Laden and the cutting and the ver- she can cut you. I'm like, okay, we're going to get arrested someday. <laughs> They're just going to show up to our doorsteps and you're just going to haul us away. <laughs> oh, she's no, 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 not even close. Yeah, yeah we're good. We're good. So my question my last question for you is besides that and i know that you turned your heartache and i know it's still a heartache but you turned it into a really a positive you know what i mean you're giving back and thorn's memory is going to live on forever through this you know what i mean and i really like how you are turning it into a positive if i were to think about like if i lost teddy tomorrow you know what i mean what are, I mean, like, what made you turn it into a non-for-profit? I mean, was what made you decide to do that versus, you know, doing something else? Like, you know, do you, you get what I'm asking you? Like, what made you decide to turn it into that? Why didn't you, you know, name your company? I know you own a pet sitting company. Why didn't you start another company and name it after him instead? Or, you know, or what made you not go down and, you know, adopt another dog and name him Thorn too? you know, or, you know, something like that, you know, we could, yeah, Thorn Jr. Or, you know, we could get Stark (laughs) Double, you know, Stark Jr., you know, (laughs) by the way, I love Stark. Yeah, yeah, Trisha doesn't know, but I do love Stark, Baby Stark, Baby Stark's one of my favorites, you know, Baby Stark, I love him. So I think the biggest, so the idea was born, like I said, when I was sitting in the waiting room, the, you know, in between the surgery and then when he started to decline, was, you know, I was just like, how, how do people afford this? Yeah. Um, and I've, you know, I've been active in uh, fundraising for many different organizations for years, you know, so it was just, I've always, I can't always give financially, but with doing it this way, I, you know, I can still help financially, you know, right. by, by just making it at the nonprofit. Um, I, I, you know, I, it just, it's just who I am. You know, I, just, I always try to give, but I can't do it. Like I said, financially, I'm not in a position where I could pay for somebody's, you know, $8,000 surgery. Um, right. And then when I started invet- researching, like there, there weren't a lot of options for people. Like, you know, there are, there are a couple nationwide um, in fact, Blue Pearl, where we went, they have their own, you know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a not-for-profit, but it's like a, 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 an option for people who can't afford right. care. Right. Uh, but I didn't know about that until afterwards. And it's mostly low-income people. So, you know, I probably wouldn't have qualified for that anyway, had I known. But, you know, in researching, yeah. there are some organizations that offer it. Some are very, um, you know, specific. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I, cause I, I think yeah. you just told me about live like Rue who I've recommended yeah. for multiple yep. people. And that was another one. Um, cause we were talking about Thorne's promise and you were just saying you had a friend that did the same thing. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's just, just who I am. And it's not to say that, you know, because of the business and, and doing the boarding and stuff like that, we really weren't in a position to adopt another dog. Um, I did not want to replace him. You know, which it wouldn't have been, but, you know, it's because we still had two dogs. I still had a cat. You yeah. know, that cat has since passed. And now we have two more cats and two more dogs and a foster <laughs> dog. So <laughs> you haven't replaced them. You just have you Never brought enough. more into the family. You just brought you've made the family yeah. a little larger. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, I'll never, ever be without a dog of that. I know for certain, you know, but or a cat. Yeah. Like, like, I have one sleeping here and one sleeping over there and they're what he's a year and a half and she's eight months. So it, it, you know, just having to be surrounded by animals, it's, it's the best. (laughs) My kids are grown. So 
Yeah, I was going to say, and what, what little they don't know is that, you know, I mean, I know this because, you know, you and I've worked together for years that, you know, you own a pet sitting company, you know what I mean? So you're around pets, you work with pets, your house is surrounded with pets, you know what I mean? It's a passion, you know, besides a passion, it's, you know, your livelihood, it's, you know, it's your thing. So yeah. I know and Trisha's I like dying to ask you a question. I can see it. Sorry, <laughs> How many people have you got, how many people have you all been able to help through Lauren's Promise? Um, it's been about I would say thirty five. Yeah. Wow! Year, wow! This, wow! This year's been a little light, and the ones mm -hmm. we have helped, I think all of them ended up passing away due to the issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, so this, but this the quality of time that they had, right? I mean, because can you equate? having more time. What's that? I mean, I, I don't think you can. I think I, I don't think that you can equate having more time, right? That if they've give, been given a week or a month or that you've given hope and quality of life to those pet parents because you've helped, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or, the, and the fact that, you know, they needed, they needed a vet confirmation, to say, all right, we've done everything we could do, but they couldn't afford that. So they, you know what I mean? So I'm like, let me help you at least even get to that point of, of so you know, oh, you know, within your heart that you yeah. gave everything you, you know, and that's been for this year, the, the couple that we've helped, that was kind of more, unfortunately, um, the way it went. But Okay. And sometimes that also, peace of mind is what you need, right, it you is. know? They just need that, that confirmation of, you know, yeah. I know it's bad, but how bad is it? Is there any hope? How bad is it? You know, well, yeah. and it's, it's also the, it's, it, it's one of the things that a lot of pet parents have a struggle to do is the guilt of, am I doing the right thing? Am I not doing the right thing? Is it the right time? Is it not the right time? You know what I mean? Am I doing this? because I want it or am I doing it because they need it or am I doing it because I'm being selfish or am I doing it because you know what I mean there's too many because because or what if what if and you're giving them at least some answers so that way they've got they can make a better decision instead of right. you know after the after they've been euthanized or had to be put asleep they're not questioning themselves and then that depression that we're talking about is heightened because they can't, they can't answer the questions that you're helping them answer a little bit so that that, that bit of it is brought down a notch, you know what I mean? So you're helping them that with that part of it, which is yeah. wonderful because a lot of people can't get that help. Right. And then, and then they're left watching their pet decline. And, you know, I, I still felt guilty after Thorin, what, and I knew like there, the vet was right there. She's like, Lisa, if you don't make this call right now, his body's going to start shutting down. And I'm like, can I just get another hour? Like, just maybe he'll turn the corner in an hour. I was sitting right in front of him. Like, you know, I, I just, so I even, they, I was right there and they're like, that's not an option anymore. You know what I mean? Other than, like I said, putting him in the oxygen tank and then that would have been, he had a like 48% chance that he would have even made it through that. And it was like another $25,000. So, like, but you know, even knowing right there, but I also didn't want his body to start shutting down and then start suffering that way too. You know, it's so that yeah. quality of life. Yes. Yes. Like he didn't even wag his tail. When I went in and I'm like, oh, <laughs> he always, wag. even when he was paralyzed, like the, not only the, like the tiny tip of his tail worked, like it was moving when he saw me. So, you know, yeah. I knew he was bad. But again, it's, it, you always want that more time, but that's probably the top. Like I didn't, the decision was made basically for me. I have not yet, knock on wood, have had to really make that decision. Like even both my cats, the one had cancer. We're pretty sure the other one had a brain tumor. You know, we did everything we could, you know, and, and I did have to make those decisions, but I knew like my one cat looked at me and I'm like, all right. It was like, please mom, you know, and I. Yeah. I've had to make that decision many a times, multiple times for, I, I mean, I had to make it during the pandemic for one of the dogs that we had mm -hmm. here that was staying with us for a client that was stuck out of the country for almost a year that was staying with us. 
and um, Roscoe. And I had to make, I had to make the decision. I had to make the call myself, you know, and I had to call the family and do a zoom and tell them that I was making the call, you know, and that, you know, I made the call and they were like, well, he kind of looks good. And I'm like, no, I mean, I made the call and they were like, well, and I was like, no, I mean, and that's, it's a hard call to make, you know what I mean? And you just have to go with your decision, but you know, it's never, it's not a fun call to have to make, you know what I mean? Never an easy one. Never an easy it's decision never, to make. Yeah. And, when and you- I've, I've made, yeah, I've made it in our industry, what you and I have done. Cause you know, I own a pet sitting company too. I, I've, I've, I've had to do it at least 40 times for clients. So I have done it multiple, I've done it. Yeah. I've done it a lot and it's not an easy call. I think that's why it's not an easy call, but it's, it's something I've done a lot, you know, and helped people make that call, you know, cause a lot of people can't. Couple, right. Yeah. I've had a couple people just I've had to talk to about, you know, they're like, well, they're still eating and drinking. I'm like, but you know, that doesn't mean anything. Else. <laughs> Right, but that's the mindset, you know. It is, it is, and I think also there are there are people that I know personally that have you know their their pet represents a past person, a past history, and they cannot let go. Yeah, Yeah, a death. They can't let that animal go, and even when that animal should. A call should have been made long ago. They're continuing to decline that selfishly the person keeps the animal along and around simply because they can't let them go. Right. And it's not fair to the animal and the, or the pet. Yeah. And I hate to say selfishly to the owner. It's just, I, it's not, I mean, I, I get what you're saying and I hate, I even hate using the word selfishly and you know, I can use right. it really well. You know what I mean? And I can, you know that, but it's, it's just that yeah. they're not, they're not capable they're not of letting, clearly. right. They're not thinking clearly because they're not able to let go of that, okay. that situation and that love. It's the love. Yeah. It's, it's, their it's child. the love. It's their family. It's their member. child. Yeah. It's their family member. It's also I the family. It, yeah. It's the family member that might love. represent a family member, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the hard part for them. So, Lisa, my question to you is after all that depressing stuff, you know what I mean? And I didn't it, cry, though. Really, yes, you did not cry. <laughs> but I told you you could, you know? Um, <laughs> If you, I mean, tell us a little bit about, you know what I mean, how we wanted to, you know, get a hold of you, you know what I mean, you know, if we could or we wanted to, how could we get a hold of you to learn a little bit more about you and, um, and you know, share a few pictures because, you know, our, our buddy Justin, which we haven't talked about him yet, but our buddy little Justin will gladly show, he's going to show pictures of Thorn and your new Motley crew. So make sure you share some of those because... So, but how can we get a hold of you if we wanted to get a hold of you? And if we wanted to donate something to help out with your cause, how would we be able to do that? So it's thornspromise.org. Um, and then there's his stories on there, how, like, how, you know, who we help, how you can ask for help, um, some of the success stories, and then even some of the past, but that been bad about keeping that updated. So I do need to get that updated. Um, we're on Facebook, Thorns Promise. We're on Instagram. Um, you know, I've had people just message me through either of those um, platforms, you know, and then I would just forward them to the website. Um, if they're local to Delaware, we have, we've had, we have a paddle option coming up in March. I try to do two in-person events. Um, okay. Here, and then throughout the year we'll do, you know, raffles or last year I did a Super Bowl pool, but I'm not doing that this year because we have the event in March coming up. Um, you know, so we do fundraising throughout the year. So the funds are available when somebody needs it. Like if they're sitting at the vet, you know, versus, well, let's do a fundraiser real fast and it'll take days yeah. to get you money, you know? So, um, but yeah, we're on, we're, I'm a, I'm a techie. So we are on, you know, all the platforms and well, not all of them, but, those three. 
Yeah, I was going to say, Teddy has one of your collars that you make. So, yes. you know, yep. a collar, you know, so we can, I can say that Teddy has a Bears Saint collar. Bears. <laughs> <laughs> so he has one of those. So, yes, yep. purchase that. So awesome. And is there any parting words that you want to share with us? Uh, no, just thank you. Um, I was quite shocked and honored yesterday when you're like, Hey, can we talk to you? I'm like, absolutely. But I'm going to cry. Um, now just, you know, it, it, it does suck that losing again, it's a family member. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's just, I mean, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Anything Lisa. you want to part with? I was going to say, Trisha, is there any parting words you have, my dear? I, I appreciate you, and I know what you've gone through. I think a lot, many of us know what you've gone through, but you've taken that grief and you've empowered that sadness and, and made something of beauty for everyone. And I, So I'm going to cry, but I, I, I thank you for you, and I thank you for what you've done, and um, look forward to supporting your efforts. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Good talking to you, ladies. You too. So, what did you think? Wow. I mean, I love Lisa. You know that. I told you that when I sent you the oh. email. We were going to interview her. I, I, I think she's phenomenal. I think that what she's done is just simply outstanding, and you can you can feel his spirit through her when she's talking about him. Mm -hmm. You can hear the pain, but you can also hear the joy of how she saw a need. You know, sitting in that veterinary clinic, she saw a need and thought, I can do this. Even before he had passed away, that she thought of something like that and how she is helping others. Um, and I, I just, I, I think she's, I think she's incredible. And I do want to say, you know, I, I talked a little bit about that. You know, I, I had multiple people come up to me and say, well, you only had moose, you know, not even, you know, a little over two years. And, and how could, you know, how could you for, I'm like, I, I think that sometimes people are insensitive and I, I, I'm, I'm glad, you know, how do you, I'm, I just, it doesn't matter how long that our pets are with us, whether it's, a month or a year or 10 years or whatever it is that that bond that they create and when they touch you and then they are your heart dog, like you talked about, Jessica, that's the end. And that is your heart dog. So I just, yeah. I, just I love what she's doing. You have a heart animal. Everybody does. I mean, and it's interesting because <clears throat> our next week's guest, what um, she and I were talking about, um, she brought up, a, I talked to her about something else, but she brought up a point to me, which I thought was interesting. And I'm trying to get the word. And we kind of hit on it, but I didn't want to say the words because you and I have talked about it. We talked about it with Nina, really. Um, but we talked about how people grieve and how people talk about us, with, you know, I mean, how they judge our grieving. And not like you said, they're judging us because... You know, you, you only had, or, you know, like I say, yeah, I'm not a yeah. crier. You know what I mean? But she's like, she called it and I wrote it down. Does that tell you anything that I thought it was such a good, I wrote it down. I was like, I, 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 uh, she, know. <laughs> yeah, I was like finding it, but she called it damage of judgment. And I was like, I, right. I was like, Oh, we have got to talk about that next week. So we're going to talk about damage of judgment next week about how people judge us on our loss with our animals. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait to talk to her. I knew you were going to love it. I had, that's why, that's why I didn't tell you about it. Sorry, but I didn't tell you because I, I thought you were so really love me But I tell you what, Lisa, Lisa's I will say to our audience, you know, support. Uh, visit yes. thornspromise.org, listen to her story and, and I, you know, go online and read the story of Thorn and, um, and she's helping, you know, what is it? 35 people that she's been able to help. And, you know, it doesn't, it, the impact of what she's doing is just absolutely amazing. And just, I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud that you brought her into our family and that to be you able get, to have you that. 
Yeah, I was going to say, my dad's going to yell at me for this. Too, I'm just going to tell you. I got to tell you a Leroy thing before we end. But she's doing that by herself. She's running Thorne's oh, promise by herself. Now, we have Moose's March, you know, and I'm just going to give you the praise. You run Moose's March. I basically take minutes at the board meeting. And when you ask me to do something, I do it for you. But we have a board that helps you. You run it. You know what I mean? I just do whatever you ask me to do for you. You know what I mean? But that is your baby. But I just, you know, if you say, Jessica, I need this, I help you. You know that. You know what I mean? I I help make sure the social gets done. I help make sure the blogs get up. I just help you with the back end stuff. You know what I mean? But she does all that by herself. So the fact that she did wow. 35 by herself is amazing. It's so incredible. Yeah, I would, I mean, the fact that she brought up a couple of things like, you know, we don't, um, don't help with pre-cancer. I would love to see if there's something that we could maybe Moose and Thorne Promise could maybe work together. You know what I mean? So that would be cool if we could help, you know, maybe work together a little bit. Yeah. Just as a, just as a, you know what I mean? Like I said, it's a one human, one person. You know, we're a two lady shop. I think, I think that what's important about organizations such as ours, that, it, the more that people get involved, that two are stronger than one, three are stronger than two. We are not exclusive. We are inclusive. And I think within many of larger organizations, they are very exclusive. And I think if you row together, you get so much more accomplished. You know, I, hey. I really just think you do. I, you do. Yeah, we just need one more older lady. I mean, we have the Golden Girls. You know what I mean? For the animal world. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I, I mean, I, we, I, we could be the new Golden we, Girls for... We, we we can we put us out of the pasture right now? I don't think I'm that old, Jessica. I do not look that old. You do not look that old. I don't feel that old. But you, like... Put us up in like the category of like we're gonna be put out to pasture and we're already digging our like graves and our you know I I don't a niche we got a niche for the golden girls of the pet world seriously we got thirty years to run with the golden girls of the pet world thirty years you realize, you realize when those women filmed Golden Girls like they were, they were, they were, they were, they were they, yeah, were, you know, was, they were our age. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. We got it. We got 30 years with this. That's what I'm trying to say. We are the golden girls of the pet world. You had that. We are the gold. Could you create like a golden girls kind of thing for us? Like a crown or something like a princess? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we got we can get Lisa involved. We just gotta find a fourth. We gotta find a fourth there. Golden girls of the we pet world. We do. Oh my gosh. Jessica, I have missed you. We have been away for a little bit, but I cannot wait, you know, to see what's happening on the horizon here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> next week, you're going to love it. Like I said, I didn't tell you about it, but I told you that. Yeah. That's a good cannot one, wait. wasn't it? So, all right, my dear. So, well, we're going to say goodbye and we will see you. You're going to be traveling for a little bit. So we're, you know what I mean? You're going to be gone for most of this month and then we'll, we'll start working on February, but you guys, we're super excited. So, you know, February is going to be a fun month too, but Trisha doesn't know what it's about yet. Cause I haven't told her. So I have no idea. I am on my clueless over here. <laughs> I might do something hardish. Legally we'll blonde. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so we want to say, oh, a Leroy store. I just got to tell you this. Leroy Ops, called me up the other day and uh, he was like, Jess, Jess. And he calls me kid. He doesn't call me by my name, by the way. So he calls me kid. He's like, kid, kid. And I'm like, what's up, dad? What's wrong? And he goes, I listened to your podcast. And I was like, oh, you did finally. And he's like, yeah. He goes, he goes, I have criticisms. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, but he goes, I found the notes. He goes, I can't criticize. He goes, he listened to the episode of our favorite things. And he goes, oh my I God. was going to tell you, he's like, I was going to tell you, you got to tell me where to buy this stuff. He goes, then I saw the notes. He's like, oh ah, so I, could, 
He goes, then I couldn't criticize you. And then he goes, the only thing I have to say is you and Trisha got to stop talking over each other. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I said, too bad. There's a lag, dad. Yeah. I'm like, there's a lag, dad. If there's a lag. I can't help you there. You know, and he goes, other than that, he goes, you two are kind of funny. <laughs> we are. We are. I just said, dad, did you like it? Did you, did you hit the like button? He goes, oh, did I have to do that? I'm like, go back and hit the like button. So there's my Leroy story for you. I just had to share that with you. All right. Hi, Leroy. Thank you for listening to us. We appreciate you so much. <laughs> yeah. So to our sponsors and everybody out there, we love you. Leroy, we love you. But I'm going to let you, I'll let you tell our, our sponsors, tell everybody who we love. And then, but we love Leroy and Naps. You know what I mean? I always have to say hi to Kathy Delaney. 24, Kathy, love you. But, um, and we love Fortune Form. Let me go through the list, make sure I got everybody. Fortune Form. Delicious Veterinary. Veterinary. We love, we thank Augie Bones for their incredible support for the VMX show for us. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, we've got some great uh, pet premium. Uh, thank you to Ed Navarro and the team there. So we've got a lot of great things going on here and adding more. We are, we are, we are. We're going to be talking to um, um, Zachary Tinkle. You know what I mean? We're going to, you know, we may be seeing him quite a bit this year, which I'm ex- super excited about, you know, so that'll be yep. fun. Yeah. Uh, yep. You know, so if you're into NASCAR, you know what I mean? definitely check out Zachary then next up and coming you know yep Mm -hmm. so get your cards now you know get your t-shirts those are gonna be those are gonna be worth money big time so all right guys have a great week we'll see you next week um happy 24 you know what I mean and we'll talk to you guys soon bye yep Bye. Thanks for listening to Pets Are Family. You can find us on all the channels now. Yes, all the channels now. So make sure you share us with your friends, your families, and your coworkers, and anybody that has a pet. Make sure you like us. Give us your feedback. Tell us if anything that you want us to talk about. All that fun stuff. You can reach me at Jessica at PetsOurFamily.net or Trisha at PetsOurFamily.net. Thank you for everything that you guys do. But make sure you like us, subscribe, um, check us out on YouTube. You can always see what we're up to. And we want to thank all of our sponsors, all of the people that support us. We love every one of you and we can't thank you enough. And remember, check out Moose's March. Moose'sMarch.com. M O O S E S M A R C H dot com. Come check us out. Talk to you guys soon. We'll see you next week. Bye.